Hi, my name is James. I wanted to do a quick comparison of the two audio accessories that are available for Sony's A7 series cameras, specifically the A7R Mark IV, which I have here, because I'm curious about the digital connection. So what you're listening to right now is the XLR K3M. This is the whole reason I bought this uh, adapter kit, is because I wanted to be able to record off-camera audio using my Sennheiser MKH416, which is what I have hooked into it right now. The microphone's about a foot away from my mouth at the moment, and uh, this is the baseline. From here, what I'm gonna do is replace the MKH416 with the uh, ECM XM1 that comes with the XLR K3M adapter kit. Then I'm gonna take that same uh, mic from the adapter kit and I'm gonna put it back into the mount that's on camera. It's actually mounted in the hot shoe. From there, we'll see how those miking setups compare to the much smaller and cheaper ECM B1M uh, in the hot shoe. And, and we'll get a sense for how that sounds from six feet away. So now we're listening to the ECM XM1 plugged into the XLR K3M adapter on top of the A7R Mark IV. This is a comparison to see how it sounds uh, it, off camera about a foot and a half away from my mouth because it's a shorter mic than the Sennheiser MKH416. This mic is sort of a bonus. It's like a toss in with the adapter kit. If it works decently, then it might make a nice backup or maybe it's your primary mic. We'll see how it compares. Next, we're gonna remove the ECM XM1 from this shock mount on a stand that I have here, not included in the package. And we're gonna put it back on the adapter itself, which it has its own built-in mount. Okay, we've now moved the ECM XM1 from its off-camera location on a stand to the camera on the XLR K3M in its own mount. So the mic is now about six feet away from me. This is more of a comparison for this adapter kit and what we're gonna put on the camera next which is the ECM B1M. Okay, now we're listening to the ECM B1M. It's in the hot shoe of the A7R Mark IV. It's set to digital. We're in the super cardioid polar pattern for this type of a setup, and we've got the audio level set to auto. Now, I bought this mic because I was excited for the potential of having a low profile uh, mic that I could use in you know, vacation videos or run and gun settings where uh, I didn't wanna be drawing a lot of attention. Very discreet, and I think that it will work well in that capacity. This particular mic, though, I have a feeling it's best suited for probably more about three feet away. So uh, I may move the camera, uh, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. Okay, now we're listening to the ECM B1M at a distance of three feet rather than the six from before. I think this is probably a more realistic distance for this mic, and I'm very interested to hear how it sounds. Probably great for vloggers and um, especially for anyone who's hand-holding. Although I've, been, I've read somewhere, and I haven't tested this myself, that the shock mount in this mic can bottom out and cause a, a rattling. Uh, it does have a shock mount built in, but I'm not sure how effective it is for hand-holding. I am not a vlogger, but I'm gonna try this out and just see how it looks, how it sounds. Um, I'm gonna move around just a little bit so that we can see if any kind of movement causes this mic to uh, bottom out like I've seen reports of. And now we're back to the MKH416, which is my preferred mic for interview settings in a range of different uses. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. It was something that I couldn't find, and so I, I'm doing this as much for myself as for anyone else who's, who's interested in the audio differences between these three. I realize I haven't gone in depth here. It's a very simple setup for a very basic use case, but I hope it gives you some sense for the various, very, various sounds that can be achieved with these, with these mics and setups. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.